is Genie Plus better in Disneyland or Walt Disney World? We're going coast to coast to find out. Hey, man fam, we are in Disneyland kicking off a new Coast to Coast Genie Plus experiment. We've teamed up with our friends Undercover Tours for this Coast to Coast Genie Challenge. Undercover Tours is the largest direct-to-consumer authorized retailer of discounted theme park tickets. They've got Walt Disney World, they've got Disneyland, Universal Orlando, Universal Studios Hollywood, special events, plus discounts on resorts, both on property and off-site in both California and Florida. All of their theme park tickets come with a best price guarantee and a 365-day refund policy, so big thank you to them for sponsoring this video. We're putting Genie Plus to the test in Disneyland and Walt Disney World to find out the best way to use it. We've got three hours on the clock. We can only use lightning lanes and let's see how much we can get done. Let's go. Hold on. I have to explain Genie Plus. Disney Genie is the service that rolled out in Walt Disney World in October 2021 and in Disneyland a few months later in December of that same year. It is the service that offers you the skip the line priority access to a variety of attractions. It is similar to what Disneyland had when they had Max Pass a few years ago. There's also some similarities to Paper Fast Pass, which both coasts had. There are three versions of Disney Genie. There's free Disney Genie, which is just using the app to look at the tip board for both attractions and dining. You can do things like personalized itineraries. You can favorite certain attractions. There's Genie Plus. Genie Plus is a cost per person per day, and it allows you expedited access at many of the attractions across all of the parks through what they call the Lightning Lane. The Lightning Lane is just the physical place at the attraction you're gonna go to with both Genie Plus and our next category, Fancy rides, as I call them. Disney calls them individual a la carte lightning lane selections. That's too much, so I just call them fancy rides. Those are the attractions that are the best of the best, the creme de la creme, the most popular attractions in any of the six Disney parks we're talking about. Those are an individual cost to skip the lines there. You do not have to purchase Genie Plus to buy a fancy ride and vice versa. When using Genie Plus and fancy rides here in Disneyland versus Walt Disney World, there's a few key differences. So the best way to use it is gonna differ from some of the advice we've given you in Walt Disney World. The first thing you gotta know is Genie Plus is more expensive out here. It's California, am I right? Genie Plus starts at $25 per person in Disneyland and it can go up based on how busy the park is. Additionally, Magic Key holders do get a discount on Genie Plus, which is different than Walt Disney World. Annual pass holders don't get any kind of discount. Included with Genie Plus out here in California are all of your pictures. All your photo pass is included when you buy Genie Plus. Not just the on-ride photos, but also if you meet a character, if you wanna take pictures with the castle, all those are included on the day that you buy Genie Plus. You can access those photos and download them for free. But beyond the price, the biggest difference with Genie Plus here in Disneyland is the fact that you can't start booking any of your lightning lanes until you are actually in the park. Until your ticket has been scanned into either Disneyland or Disney California Adventure, you cannot start booking lightning lanes. That means no 7 a.m. wake up call to try and book your first lightning lane. You have to physically step into a park to start booking them. The other main difference with Disney Genie has to do with fancy rides. In Walt Disney World, fancy rides, you select a time like old Fast Pass Plus. You select the hour window based on availability that you'd like to visit those attractions. Here in Disneyland, the fancy rides are Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, Star Wars Rides of the Resistance, and Radiator Springs Racers. And you book them at a per ride cost, just like in Walt Disney World, but they are next available, just like Genie Plus. So if you are looking at the app right now, is just looking, Cars has spots around one o'clock. If you didn't wanna go at one o'clock, you'd have to keep an eye on it and wait until it's later in the day when you'd like to book it. Because of this, stacking isn't really a thing in California the way it is in Florida. We're gonna show you again stacking in the Walt Disney World portion of this, but because you have to be in the park to start booking and using Genie Plus, stacking really doesn't come into play. Now the 120 minute rule does exist in case you run into it. As a quick refresher, the 120 rule means that you can book your next lightning lane either when you've used your first one, if the first one expires because you forgot to use it for some reason, or after it's been 120 minutes. So there are few and far between attractions that could be that far out that you may run into the 120 minute rule, but the best advice I have for that is take a look at that little blue bar up at the top of your tip board. It'll tell you when you can book your next lightning lane. We actually did run into using the 120 minute rule today because we came into the park to start filming something else. I went ahead and booked us Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout and it's had since been two hours, so I was also able to book Incredicoaster. So we have both of those ready to go when we start the clock on this experiment. But for now, I feel like that's enough talking. Let's get to some rides. Okay, we can go now. Really? Yeah. Let's go, let's go. <laughs> Was it hard to get up? My old bones. <laughs> <laughs> the youngest one. <laughs> the challenge has started and we are headed to our first ride. The first one we've got booked 
to kick off these three hours in Coaster. This is actually one of my favorite attractions at Disney California Adventure. And Coaster, upon uh, Disney California Adventure opening was California Screamin' and featured the voice of one Neil Patrick Harris to welcome you onto your roller coaster adventure. But today it has been rethemed along with all of Pixar Pier to feature the family of the Incredibles. Jack-Jack will escape from the grasp of our family and they will work together throughout the ride to try to catch him. Along the way, you'll see different story moments throughout the tunnels that are on the hills of the roller coaster. I really love this ride. I really love this roller coaster. I think it's a can't miss for me. And it also is one of the longest roller coasters in the world in terms of track length. Fun fact, thought you should know. Now, while we do have a lightning lane, um, again, this ride is only at a 10 minute wait currently. And while that's pretty low, you might even say it's a slow day, the reality is that it's always on the lower side so now credit coaster does have a 48 inch height requirement again maybe one of the reasons why we don't have as many families that are riding this ride they make it a little bit easier to get on but it is a 48 inch so not all the kids are going to be able to ride this one but if they can to me i can't miss a huge upgrade from california screaming as somebody that has ridden both versions i think the tunnels on the hills bring a ton of story to this roller coaster i also just think it's a ton of fun the music from uh, Incredibles is one of my favorites, and I even enjoy the uh, you know the scent they bring. Keep out your uh, your nose for Jack Jack's num num cookies. It's I will, tasty. I will keep out my nose. Keep out your nose. Keep it out. Keep it out. Keep it out. Keep out that nose. Hey, Alan, are you keeping out your nose? I, I got it. Oh, we stole the nose. When did my nose become pink? It's back. There's a fun moment on this pre-show where the interviewer asks the Incredibles if they're excited about the ride being dedicated to them and having an Incredibles ride. And Violet goes, you didn't make a ride, you just renamed an old ride, which I think is a very funny uh, end joke about this using to be California screaming. Attraction number one, done in Credit Coaster. On to Radiator Springs Racers. Does my hair look ridiculous? Yes. What are you gonna do? Super babies! Super, uh, babies. super babies! Super babies. Up next on our docket today is Radiator Springs Racers. This attraction takes you on a high speed car ride through Ornament Valley where you actually get to compete with them, some of the cars against other riders through this attraction. It has a 40 inch height requirement, so it really is fun for almost all of your family, except for the truly little ones and it is a fancy ride so we paid fifteen dollars per person to get access to the lightning lane here now let's be clear if you do choose to purchase a fancy ride that sits at another cafeteria table than the other genie plus lightning lane so they don't talk to each other which allows you to knock out a number of attractions in rapid succession if you're booking lightning lanes through genie plus frequently and also buying those fancy rides the entrance to radiator springs racers is right next to lubo rama parts and stuff There's also a single rider line for those of you who don't mind necessarily splitting up your party to get on the attraction faster, which is another good thing to note when you're planning your day. Now for the real question. Do you think we're going to win? Yes. 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 I'm a winner. I am a winner. And honestly, how would you know if we didn't? So we, that's, we, we could just say it, but we're honest. We, we film with integrity, Alan. That's right, we have character. Alan, questioning our integrity this way. We're going to win.
It's gonna be We did. Doesn't matter if it's by an inch or a mile. Winning's winning. Ask any racer, any real racer. It don't matter if you win by an inch or a mile. Winning's winning. Also, no one's gonna believe us that we won because Alan put it in their minds that we could lie. We the seeds of doubt. We won. Doc Hudson will confirm it. Yes. On to Avengers Campus. Made it into Avengers Campus for our next attraction, Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. I was thinking that even though Mission Breakout is my favorite ride in this park, I am I try to be a, a good friend, and I know your favorite thing to do in this park. Would y'all rather go see the Doctor Strange show? Yeah, let's do it. You go to that. No, 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 no all together. <laughs> do you think I'll do the math? <laughs> Um, you know what I would, I would love to, but we are doing a lightning lane only challenge and there's no lightning lane to Doctor Strange, so that's the only reason I'm saying no. Let's go this way. I got distracted because Shang-Chi was up there. You're my favorite. I like your armor. Yes, it looks very nice. Can we take a picture? How do, how do you pose? Okay. But now we're on our way to Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. Headed into Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. This used to be Tower of Terror and then it was transformed and reimagined to feature all of your favorite Guardians. The plot is that you are visiting the Collector, AKA Benicio Del Toro, and he has captured the Guardians as part of his collection, among other Disney artifacts such as Figment and the original Yeti from the Matterhorn. Of course, Rocket isn't going to stand for being captured, so he recruits your help. He needs human hands to unlock the collector's traps. What's really fun about this attraction is that there are different songs you could hear, different scenes you could see, different things you could hear. My favorite thing is when Rocket makes a joke and goes, Disneyland, that doesn't make sense thematically when the doors open up top. But this is one of my favorite rides ever. It's my favorite ride in this park. It's also incredibly popular. It usually has a pretty long wait, so it's a good one to use a lightning lane on. This is the first one I booked today. We came into the park and bought Genie Plus around 11 and I booked it then. It was already a couple hours out. So this is one of the attractions that could potentially kick off that 120 minute rule in this park. There's not many. It's probably this one, possibly Soren and possibly Toy Story Mania on this side of Disneyland. What song do y'all hope we get? The classic is the Jackson 5. That's, that's my favorite. That's, the, that's, that's the my classic favorite. hope. I'm willing it to be. Yeah. I'm going to bet, though, Burning Love. Oh. That's my bet. Okay. okay. Not necessarily saying that's what I hope for. But the three I'm of saying us, I'm betting. Okay, yeah, so the three of us are putting out into we're, the universe. We're, man we're manifesting. Manifested. Jackson 5. You bet Burning Love. I'm going to bet Free Ride. I'm going to say I bet. Hit me with your bet shot. All right. All right. Bets have been made. Locked and loaded. <laughs> I've got good news and I've got bad news. All right. I'm ready for the good news. That's okay. I'm going bad news first. Desserts first. <laughs> you know okay. Dessert first. The dessert is that we have Haunted Mansion Holiday book next. Oh. Tasty dessert. Now, who the veggies? Uh, we had Monsters and Glass Floor booked, but it is temporarily closed, so we got a multi experience pass to use instead. 
Now, multi-experience passes will be issued automatically if an attraction that you have booked a Lightning Lane for closes for weather or technical concerns. They are extra awesome in Disneyland because, oh, I'm sorry, Ant-Man's here? Hi, Ant-Man. How's it going? Good, how are you? I'm doing lovely. Bye. Anyway, Experience Redemption passes are extra awesome in Disneyland because they actually work places that don't normally take Lightning Lane. There's not a ton of attractions that offer Genie Plus or a fancy ride here in Disneyland, but if you get an Experience Redemption, make sure to check where you can redeem it because we could redeem this one at places like Pirates of the Caribbean, Snow White's Enchanted Wish. Neither of those attractions take Genie Plus normally, but we could use it on one today. So that is a nice little bonus. And if we want to do Monsters, we'll have to rebook it once it's open again. We only have three hours and we're leaving? Yeah, that's right. You know, a little different than uh, Walt Disney World, our recommendation, if you have Genie Plus, if you're trying to get the most out of your day at the Disneyland Resort, is Park Hop. These parks are so close to one another, and we're literally walking from Disney California Adventure to Disneyland right now. It's so fast, make the most of it. We booked three attractions at Disney California Adventure, knocked out three big rides. Now we're heading across to Disneyland to take out some rides over on this side of the park. Maybe what's available is on the other side. If you can, park hop. You will make the most of your day when you're over here at the Disneyland Resort. As we've made it into Disneyland, our first stop, our first use of Genie Plus, Haunted Mansion. But it's not just Haunted Mansion, it's Haunted Mansion Holiday. We're here on the last couple of days of Haunted Mansion Holiday. Of course, the seasonal overlay of the Haunted Mansion featuring all of your favorite Nightmare Before Christmas characters. This will usually run from when Halloween decorations go up until the first of the year, the following year after New Year's. And it is one of my favorite overlays Disneyland does, period. However, if you are visiting the Disneyland Resort while Haunted Mansion Holiday is running, just know that it's gonna raise the popularity of this ride quite a bit. We were able to fiddle faddle to get a closer time that we didn't have to wait quite as long, but it is incredibly popular during this overlay. So make sure to make it a priority if it's important to you. This year, he's decided to play Sandy Claus. But when Halloween creates Christmas... On the 13th day of Christmas, my ghoul love gave to me six mystic mirrors reflecting futures. With our excursion through Haunted Mansion holidays complete. Our incredibly comfortable excursion. Yeah, three deep in a dune buggy is cozy. We are on our way. We are vasting yes. over to Pirates of the Caribbean, which is a very, very short jaunt away from Haunted Mansion. This attraction takes you, in my opinion, on a much better journey and a more complete journey following the pirates and their plundering of a city Actually, multiple different locations. Just, they just go a plundering, really. They're, they vast to lots of places. A vasting and plundering as they go. There is no height requirement for this, and so it is fun for the whole family. We are actually going to use our multi-experience pass or bonus pass that we received because Monsters was down over in Disney California Adventure. Now, another tip. Remember, Fancy Rides and Genie Plus Lightning Lanes sit in different cafeteria tables. Well, guess what? There's a third table. And that is where the multiple experience or bonus passes sit. So do not forget to book another lightning lane if you do happen to receive a multi-experience pass. Okay. There be squalls ahead. Can't you reach any further, you stuff we build right? We 
hard as your home. I humbly accept this magnificence. Well, we've officially hit our three hour time limit. It is good to note at this point as a reminder that a lot of times at Disneyland, the lightning lane is still somewhat of a wait. Lightning lane in general does not mean walk on, but I have found more at Disneyland than at Walt Disney World that sometimes that means like a 15, 20 minute wait. We waited that long to actually get on Guardians. We waited about 10, 15 minutes to get on Haunted Mansion, about 10 minutes over at Pirates of the Caribbean. I think it's just because there's fewer attractions that offer lightning lanes and it's just smaller and more dense in these parks in general. But still, in those three hours, we did five of the most popular rides across Disneyland. A couple Disneyland pros and cons for using okay. Genie Plus. A big con, obviously, it costs more. It's $25 at a minimum per person, which does add up, especially as you add more people. Another con is that it's not offered at as many attractions as it is in Walt Disney World. Disneyland simply doesn't have the space to have another queue at a lot of attractions. Most of the Fantasyland attractions don't have it. Because of that, your options are a little bit more limited, which does mean those lightning lanes become more of a hot commodity. A huge pro though here at Disneyland is that you don't have to get up at 7 a.m. to book anything. It doesn't start until you get in the park, which makes it a little bit more leisurely and a little bit more vacation-like. Additionally, it seems because so many of the Disneyland guests are locals, not as many people purchase it, which means that there aren't those attractions like Slinky Dog, like Remy's that go away within a few seconds. For the most part, you can ride an attraction, get off, book the next thing you want to ride. Ride an attraction, get off, book the next thing you want to ride. So it's a lot more user friendly out here in Disneyland. Well, that was a lot of fun. We accomplished a lot in three hours. It's five attractions in three hours, and we could keep going if we wanted to. In fact, we've actually already booked Web Slingers. Our time on the West Coast is over for this challenge, so I'll have to trust you all to take on the East Coast and finish it out at Walt Disney World. I'm sure you'll do just fine. It's a heavy burden. We'll do what we can. We'll see y'all in Walt Disney World. And just like magic, we're at Epcot now. We are. Magic. Magical times. Through the magic of airplanes. Airplanes are magic. How do they stay up? I don't know. Science. Anyway, we're going to put three hours on the clock starting now and see how many lightning lanes we can get here today. Hang on. I have to explain Genie Plus and Walt Disney World first. I know what you're all thinking. Molly, you already explained Genie Plus. You don't have to do it again. I wish that was true, but there are quite a few differences in Walt Disney World versus Disneyland when it comes to Genie, so let's go over them now. For starters, the cost of Genie Plus is less here in Walt Disney World. It starts at $15 per person per day, but like in Disneyland, that varies day by day. On the day we're doing this challenge, we paid $22 each for the Genie Plus service. Additionally, it works on more attractions here in Walt Disney World. It works on over 40 attractions across all four theme parks. Also in Walt Disney World, you do not get your photo pass pictures as part of your Genie Plus purchase. You will, however, later this month, starting March 20th, get your on-ride photos. So when you zoom out the doors at Test Track or go down the drop at Frozen Ever After, those photos you do get to keep. But all the photos in front of the castle or Spaceship Earth or anything like that, those are not included with Genie Plus the way they are in Disneyland. But perhaps the biggest difference between Walt Disney World and Disneyland and the thing that makes Walt Disney World so much more confusing is when you can book Genie Plus. If you remember out in Disneyland, you cannot start booking fancy rides or regular Genie Plus lightning lanes until you have entered the park. That is not how it works in Walt Disney World. Here in Walt Disney World, you can book your first Genie Plus, not fancy ride, Genie Plus lightning lane at 7 a.m. That goes for anybody who's purchased Genie Plus. For fancy rides, you can book them at 7 a.m. if you are a Walt Disney World resort guest or at the time that park opens if you are a non-resort guest. Additionally, with fancy rides, you are going to be booking a time slot that you would like to ride it. It is not next available like Genie Plus in Walt Disney World or like fancy rides and Genie Plus out in Disneyland. Because of all of these rules, because the way Genie Plus works here, and because there are more big attractions in Walt Disney World, you have to be a little bit more strategic. It's less just get into the park, start booking, ride the ride, book the next thing, ride the thing. It's not like that the way we had in Disneyland. In Walt Disney World, you need to have a little more thought into what you're booking because you need to be up at 7 a.m. to book your first attraction. The attractions across the four Walt Disney World parks that go very, very quickly within minutes usually at 7 a.m. are Remy's Ratatouille Adventure here in Epcot, Slinky Dog Dash over at Hollywood Studios. Occasionally you'll see things sell out rather quickly for Peter Pan's Flight, uh, Jungle Cruise, Navi River Journey, but the big ones that sell out really fast, again, Remy and Slinky Dog. So of course at 7 a.m. this morning, I booked us Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. Because of that, that 120 minute rule comes into play a lot more here in Walt Disney World than it does in Disneyland, partly because there's more e-ticket rides, partly because more people are using Genie Plus since it's less locally focused. But we talked about the best way of using 
Genie Plus out in Disneyland, and that is to park hop. To get into the park, to just book what you want, keep going back and forth, ride as much as you can. Here at Walt Disney World, in my experience, the best way to use it is stacking. Stacking is a little confusing and it heavily relies on that 120 minute rule, but it can set you up for a really great afternoon or evening of success in a Disney park which is exactly what we did here today in Epcot. If you recall from the earlier half of this video, the 120 minute rule comes into play when you're booking your next pass. You can book your next Lightning Lane on Genie Plus, Fancy Rides are at their own cafeteria table, if you remember. When it comes to Genie Plus, you can book your next one either when you've used it, if it expires, or after it's been two hours, which means you can start at 7 a.m. and start booking attractions every two hours and set yourself up for a very fun, successful evening of a bunch of rides back to back to back. Of course, there's one more caveat to this rule, and that is that the two hours doesn't start until the park opens. So, for example, Epcot opened at 9 a.m. today. I could book one at 7 a.m., Epcot opened at 9, then I could book another one at 11, at 1, at 3, and 5, plus a fancy ride, which means we're walking into Epcot with six attractions already booked. I'll talk more about strategy as we go to each of those attractions, but for now, let's officially put that three hours on the clock. Are you ready? Up first on our journey is Frozen Ever After. This is a boat dark ride that takes you through various scenes and locales throughout the Frozen franchise. With some of your favorite characters. Unless your favorite character is Hans, in which case you will not see him because he's in jail. This attraction has no height requirement, so it is fun for the whole family. And if the location looks familiar to you, that is because it took the place of Maelstrom, which was here in the Norway Pavilion of Epcot. As you can imagine, based on the popularity of Frozen, Frozen Ever After is very popular. Right now it has a 105 minute wait. I've been monitoring the app all day. It's not had less than an hour or 70 minutes all day long. So it's a very good one to use a lightning lane on. It goes very quickly, not quite as quickly as Remy these days, but I would say it's your number two when you're booking your lightning lanes. Now. When I booked this ride today, it got a little confusing. This was the ride I booked in the 11 o'clock spot, kind of. It wasn't available when I was booking at 11 o'clock, so I booked Soren and then used the brand new modify feature, which is my new best friend in the Disney app. You see, it's in your best interest to always have a lightning lane booked. That way you kick off that 120 minutes and you can be booking as many as possible. And this is where the modify button becomes very helpful. So I went ahead and booked Soren as soon as I could book something when I saw Frozen was unavailable. Then I continuously throughout the day would click modify plan on Soren and see if I could get Frozen to pop up. I fiddle faddled, which is just my word for refresh the screen as many times as I could. I got God a few times, which is when it shows up. And then by the time I click it, it says, sorry, it was taken by somebody else because somebody else is faster than me. But eventually after doing that every 30 minutes or so for a few hours, I was able to secure a landing lane for Frozen Ever After, which is why it's our first one today. Again, going with the differences between Disneyland and Disney World, you can get usually more done in Disney World, but it takes more work. It took me continuously checking on my phone to see if Frozen would pop back up for me to book it, as opposed to in Disneyland where most rides you can just book them really easily. But for now, I'm not gonna let it go. It's time to go see Anna and Elsa. Have you seen that skit where Kristen Bell has to dress up like Elsa because her daughter wanted her to be Elsa for Halloween? and she gets really mad and she's like it's Anna's story Anna saved the day Anna has more songs and Elsa got one banger and now everyone thinks it's Elsa's movie it's very funny I mean I agree with Crystal Bell <laughs> attraction. I really like the animatronics and I have to ask who's your favorite character from Frozen? Sven. That's my favorite. Followed very closely by Kristoff. I think Sven is Kron. That is a valid comparison. I agree though that the face mapping and the projection technology on this animatronics stunning. The most impressive one though is Olaf because he's so small so they had to get all the mechanics to make him work in a body half as big as any of the other ones so I think that's pretty neat. Listen, he just skates better. 
He ice skates better. Up next is Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. Now this is a fancy ride, meaning it is an individual lightning lane purchase. It is one of four fancy rides currently in Walt Disney World. The first obviously being Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. Then you have Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, Star Wars Rise of the Resistance, and finally Avatar Flight of Passage. In the case of Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, this attraction has a 42 inch height requirement. It is currently the newest addition here at Epcot and it is a intense roller coaster experience that follows the Guardians of the Galaxy crew as they attempt to rescue everyone? The cosmos? Humanity, as the, we know it. Well, I mean, it's more than humanity, right? There's more than just us out there. We're going back to the Big Bang. They're resetting everything. Yeah, but. Wait a minute, this feels unfair. Hold on. The bad guy. The celestial says this species has failed and he's referring to humans which he's not completely wrong see here's my issue why is he condemning the rest of the galaxy the entire cosmos to death destruction and uh -huh. effective reimagining a la thanos because of humanity's failings i don't think he means to i think he just means to erase terrans but then he's going back to the, the big bang but i think they do that I think I don't know. I think it all. I I don't think that's his plan. I don't think he knows how the cosmic generator works. He's just rolling with it. I think he just wants to erase humans. Or maybe he's confused because the humans are in space, and so he thinks humans are everywhere. I feel like we haven't done anything that bad to erase the entire cosmos. But anyway, thanks to the efforts of the I have to say. Uh, yeah. I don't normally take the side of. The Celestial trying to kill us all. But, that seems like a fair take. But maybe he saw Avatar in Avatar 2 and saw what humans are doing to the planet. And he's like, not nah, cool, guys. And because he is part planet, he's offended. You're, you're saying that Celestials are part planet? Are they not? Is that not what we learned in Guardians 2? I mean, we learned that they incubate in planets like eggs. See? I think he's defending his own kind. Just... Just throwing another perspective out. Well, if we follow that line of logic, the Guardians of the Galaxy thwart the, the Celestials. <laughs> thwart the good guy. <laughs> they, they steal. The Cosmic Generator back and prevent the Celestial from going back and, according to Molly, saving us all. No, saving them all. They're looking out for number one in their own kind. But anyway, enough of our nonsense banter. On the Guardians, we have asked. Like Alan said, Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind is a fancy ride, which means that we could not book it until 9 a.m. this morning because we are not resort guests. Unfortunately, when I went to book it, it had seemingly sold out. I kept checking back as I was continuously checking back to move some other things around, and eventually a time popped up that I was able to book and purchase. It cost us $15 per person to ride this today. So again, that is a big difference between Disneyland and Walt Disney World is how you book those fancy rides. Being able to book at 7 a.m. is a perk for resort guests. It's a con for non-resort guests. But what I will say, if you are not a resort guest or you are not able to book the fancy ride of your choice at 7 a.m., keep checking back. I've seen every attraction pop back up, some more than others. Flight of Passage and Mine Train tend to come back faster than Guardians and certainly faster than Rise. I have been able to buy Rise later in the day as they figure out kind of capacity and what the line's looking like. They may release more, so always keep your eye open for fancy rides that may pop up throughout the day. Now, much like Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout in Disney California Adventure, there are six different songs you could get on this attraction. Alan, what song do you think we're going to get? Disco Inferno. Mm, a good choice. Now, you are right in California. Let's see if you can be right here. I'm going to go with Conga. What's happening? I'm not sure. Our power's out. And the cosmic generator's gone. Sure, Call the Guardians. Now. Hey, what's up, Nova Four? Our cosmic generator has been stolen. What? How? What did we think of that? That thing's gotta be worth a fortune. I am good. I have been watching Terrans for the arms. But it is never gonna work. Rocket! Well? Okay, I walked onto your vehicle. <laughs>
Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind check. What I will say about that attraction, it does take a little time. There's two pre-shows and the queue spaces in between can take a little bit. So it took about 40 or so minutes to get through that entire experience. If you do not want to pay for a fancy ride for Guardians, you're going to have to join a virtual queue, which is currently available at 7 a.m. from anywhere. 1 p.m. you have to be inside the park. Either way, you need to have an Epcot park reservation. You can confirm your party up to an hour prior to it opening, so you're going to want to do that, which means making sure anybody that wants to go is selected and linked up. Then use a world clock to count down to whichever time slot you're at. Refresh the page at 59.59, click join queue, and hope that you get a spot. Next on the docket is Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. This is a trackless ride that has no height requirement, so it truly is fun for the whole family. This attraction follows Remy the Rat as he makes his way through Chef Gusto's kitchen and all of the hijinks that ensue. And you, being similarly rat sized, get to experience it all firsthand. It's a really cute attraction. As a little word of warning, this attraction is in 3D, so if Wearing 3D glasses or a 3D attraction makes you nauseated. Just be aware going in. I say that as a colorblind person, so when I put on the 3D glasses, it's just kind of a blur that smells like bread. As I said at the beginning of the Disney World portion of this, Remy's Ratatouille Adventure is one of the most popular lightning lanes across all of Walt Disney World. Typically, the lightning lanes go for the entire day within just a few minutes of 7 a.m. If you want to ride this, you want to be able to book it ASAP. And I highly recommend using Lightning Lane here. It currently has a 90 minute wait. A few minutes ago when we were looking at the app, it had a 175 minute wait. And that's very typical for this attraction. One thing to note when booking attractions at 7 a.m. in Walt Disney World is that they no longer show you what time you are booking from about 7 to about 7.20, 7.30. They had too many people hemming and hawing over if they wanted that time. Then they also had people clicking an attraction and it said it's going to be a 9 a.m. return time, but by the time the system processed it and processed everybody clicking at 7 a.m., then it was a 4 p.m. return time and people were really upset. So now at 7 a.m. when you're looking at the My Disney Experience app, it just says check availability. So I did that right at 7 a.m. for Remy's Ride to Adventure. It actually gave me a really early time slot, like a 9.30 to 10.30 a.m. time slot. I knew we weren't going to be in that park that early, so I have booked it and then immediately modified it and it changed it to a like a 6.30 to 7.30. So that's just kind of a weird nuance that you're going to have to keep in mind of when you're booking in Walt Disney World is that you are not going to be able to see the return times right at 7 a.m. Book what you want anyway ASAP and then use that modify feature. <laughs> The chef Randy is waiting for you. That's it! Remy's Ratatouille Adventure really is a, just a sweet and cute attraction. So cute. Uh, it's not, it's, listen, it's not going to knock your socks off with any thrills, but it's incredibly immersive, and it really is just a, a nice attraction, fun for the whole family. We are en route back to Future World to our next attraction. Fake Future World. It's no longer called that. All right. Yeah. It'll be Future World to me forever. Yeah, it's, it's Future World. Fine. We're headed back to Fake Future World to ride Soren, which is our next attraction. And that means we will not be park hopping in this three hour Genie Plus challenge here in Walt Disney World. Now, park hopping in Disneyland is the best way to use Genie Plus. And that's because one, the parks are significantly closer together. It literally takes seconds to walk from one park to the other. Two, there are less attractions that Genie Plus functions on in California. It's about 20 attractions split between Disneyland and Disney California Adventure. So to justify the cost of Genie Plus, you're going to want to park up between the two parks to get the most value for your dollar. Now here in Disney World, especially on a three hour challenge, it does not make sense to park up while using Genie Plus. And that's because the parks are just simply very far apart and it would take a significant amount of time to jump from one park to the next. Now, if you are not on a three hour park challenge, 
like we are, which I imagine most of you wouldn't be doing that unless you want to. And you do want to park hop. Remember, park hopping in Walt Disney World starts at 2 p.m. And as you tap into your last attraction at the park you are currently in, I would book a lightning lane at the park that you are going to. That way, by the time you arrive, you'll already have a lightning lane slotted and be able to go to that attraction and knock that out. We, however, are headed into the Lands Pavilion to ride Soarin'. As just a little bit of a time check, it's been a little under two hours since we started and we've ridden the three most popular rides in Epcot. Now that may not seem like a lot, but keep in mind that both Remy's and Frozen Ever After had over a 90 minute posted wait. Plus we did Guardians, which I said did take about 40 minutes. Also keep in mind that we have been walking a great amount of steps across the park. That is one thing about Disney World is that with some of these popular attractions, you're kind of at the mercy of the genie for what time slot you get. With less popular attractions, there's a little bit more freedom in choosing what time, but when trying to book Remy, Guardians, and Frozen, I basically took any time that they gave me in the evening time when I knew we'd be here. So we've been doing a lot of walking, and now that we're at the front of the park, we can bang out a few pretty quickly because they're all close by. And we are starting with everyone's mom's favorite ride, Soarin' Around the World. Soarin' Around the World has a 44.0 inch height requirement, and this is that hand glider attraction that takes you over world monuments such as the Great Wall of China, the Pyramids of Giza, the Taj Mahal. It is just simply the most relaxing attraction. It is so luxurious. You're gonna smell what you're gonna see. It's just one of those attractions that everybody that can ride it loves it. I actually haven't been on this in a really long time, so I'm very excited to uh, see Patrick Warburton and hit the skies. Now, if you are gonna tier the attractions at Epcot by what's the most important, your number one, as far as Genie Plus goes, is gonna be Remy's Ride to Adventure. Tied for number two is Frozen Ever After and Test Track, then Soarin', and then you kind of start getting into everything else. Then you get into your Mission Space, your Spaceship Earth, Living with the Land, the Seas, etc. Those are all pretty easy to book, but there are some really high front runners here at Epcot. Soarin' isn't one of them. It's great to use the Lightning Lane if you're purchasing Genie Plus, because it can get up to an hour long or so wait, uh, but it's not as necessary here as some of the other rides we've been on today. Do you remember when Soarin' was the, the attraction at Epcot? I sure do, and it's my mother's favorite ride, as I said, sure and so is. we would always like have to dash to get the paper fast pass for it. Now, here's the real question. Do you prefer Soarin' over California or Soarin' Around the World? Soarin' over California. I have to agree. I mean, don't get me wrong, Soarin' Around the World is beautiful, but there's something so core memory nostalgic about Soarin' over California. Wait, I have good news for you. You know how we're going to Disneyland this spring? I do. Do you know that Sword Over California will be playing for a limited time while we're there? Thank you, Mechanic Jesus. Sword Over California tends to come back in Disneyland. It's at Disney California Adventure during their Food and Wine Festival, which is in the springtime there. So I'm very excited. We'll be back over there uh, this spring on a family trip, and I'm excited to ride the OG. But for now, I'm excited to ride this one. <laughs> Soren check. It really is just the most pleasant attraction. So peaceful. It's so nice. Uh, and next up, we are going to stay in the same building. Originally, at the five o'clock booking spot, kind of on our way into the park, I booked Mission Spas. 
And I don't like Mission Spas. I don't think Alan likes Mission Spas. I don't know anyone that likes Mission Spas. Who's jonesing for Spas? Not me. But I booked it mostly because it was the furthest away time of any Lightning Lane. And I was going to just modify it to whatever we wanted to ride later. And the answer is living with the land. I love that. Living with the land is one of my personal favorite attractions in all of Epcot. And it is a peaceful boat ride through a variety of scenes that describe the different geographical landscapes of the earth ending in a greenhouse experience that takes you through oh, so many beautiful biomes where you can see a lot of plants and animals and a lot of the sustainable work that's being done here at Epcot that supplies a lot of the plants and fish products to places like the Garden Grill. Now listen, you don't normally need a lightning lane for living with the land, but we're doing a challenge here, folks. So we got one because we take this seriously for you. We do this for you. Certainly not because I love this attraction. It's for you. The American Prairie once appeared as desolate as the desert. <laughs> but of agriculture are exploring innovative ways to produce bountiful harvests now and into the future. Some, like the water that would thrive in wet swampy areas and waterways. Nearly 5,000 pounds of fish each year to serve in restaurants, while there are more than 50,000 edible plant species in the world, account for nearly two-thirds of our global food consumption. Ideas have been inspired by nature, like these fruit and vegetable trees. By growing these ground plants vertically, we can increase yields and better control diseases. From one low-key fave to another, now headed to the seas with Nemo and friends. The Seas with Nemo and Friends is a very cute dark ride that puts you in a clam mobile and sends you into the story of Finding Nemo. Now, as much as I love undersea life and I love sharks and I grew up loving dolphins and whales and all kinds of things, Finding Nemo is not my favorite franchise, but I adore any Disney dark ride that puts you into a story. And that's exactly what this does. Plus, it ends up in the Sea Base Aquarium, which I love exploring as well. So. We're headed there now. Now, much like living with the land, as well as things like Journey into Imagination with Figment, you don't normally need a lightning lane here unless it's a really busy day. Right now it's got a 10 minute wait, which is probably a walk on. But again, we're doing a lightning lane challenge. This is the most recent one I booked uh, just after we had run the clock on all the other ones. Test track wasn't available. I could have fiddle faddled for it, but to be honest, I don't love test track. So just went ahead and booked the seas. Nemo! The seas check so cute, but obviously it would be rude for me to come in here and not say hello to one of my besties. There you are. Hey, bestie. Well, hi, Molly. Hi, Alan. Hey, Mr. Eel. How are you today? Well, I'm good. Just hanging out, you know, being an eel. How's the missus? Oh, she's good. She's just busy. You know how it is. I'm just stretching. Excuse me. I'm trying to work on my back support. You know, you got... Oh, okay. Well, Mr. Earl, it seems like you are in the middle of something. Um, and I just want to come by and say, hey, and I love you and I miss you. And I'll uh, see you later. Well, thanks, Molly. Thanks, Alan. Thanks, everybody that comes and says hi. Keep tagging Mammoth Club. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Keep watching Mammoth Club. Come see me. Tag them in your pics. Okay, bye. Bye, Mr. Eel. We love you. It's good to see you. Isn't he just the best? Yeah. And our grand finale for our three hour challenge is Spaceship Earth. Now, you do not normally need a lightning lane for this attraction. However, there are times where the queue gets up to 45 minutes or longer. And that is because oftentimes people walk into the park, see Spaceship Earth, see that it is a ride, and they just think, yeah, I'm gonna hop in that ride and I'm gonna knock that out before I go into the park. I recommend against that. You can come back when the wait times go down and get onto this Omnivore attraction with relative ease which is what we're gonna do.
to round out our challenge with a lightning link on Spaceship Earth, if that wasn't clear. Spaceship Earth, check, an iconic attraction. Now, taking out the science lady, because she's scientifically the best, who is your favorite animatronic character in Spaceship Earth? Oh, if, it, if you didn't ask animatronic, I would have said the mammoth. Well, yeah, he is the best, but you have um, to have an animatronic choice. Egyptian pounding reeds flat or sleeping monk. Great choices. I'm going to go for newspaper boy yelling at... Nothing. At the wall. I must say, he's not nothing. He is staring blankly at a wall and shouting. Yeah, he's my favorite. Rumor as it is face melted, so. Okay, now that we have wrapped up our Disney World portion of this, let's talk about some of the pros and cons of using Genie Plus in Disney World. For starters, it's usually cheaper here in Disney World than it is in Disneyland. Disney World has that fluctuating pricing where it could be $15, it could be as high as $29 on the busiest days of the year, but most of the time it's lower than the $25 cost in Disneyland. Another pro here in Walt Disney World is that it works at more attractions. Again, in Disneyland, it only works about 20 things and it works well over 40 attractions here in Walt Disney World. So as many as you can do across both parks in one day in Disneyland, you may be able to do that many in one park in Walt Disney World. Additionally, because there are more attractions that accept the lightning lanes, the weight at the attractions themselves tends to be lower in the lightning lanes. If you remember from the Disneyland portion, we did five attractions in those three hours, and it's because on average we waited 20 plus minutes to get on each attraction. And yes, that was significantly shorter than the posted wait time. It's still significantly longer than you'll wait at attractions at Walt Disney World to board into the lightning lane. Now, before we get into the biggest pro of all here at Walt Disney World, let's talk about a few of the cons. Number one, you do not get photo pass included like you do out in Disneyland. Again, later this month, you are going to start getting those on ride photos. But as far as any photos you take with characters or with the icons or anywhere else with photo pass, you do not get those included with your purchase. And I think it's a nice touch over in Disneyland. Additionally, there are no discounts on Genie Plus here. So the way annual pass holders can get a discount in Disneyland, that does not apply here in Walt Disney World. But I would say the biggest con of using Genie Plus in Walt Disney World is the fact that you have to get up at 7 a.m. That's a huge difference between Disney World and Disneyland. You have to be up ready to go, ready to click some buttons at 7 a.m. if you want to book the most in-demand attractions or get the most out of your purchase. Same thing for your fancy rides. If you are a resort guest, you need to be up at 7 a.m. ready to book rides the resistance. Because of the way fancy rides work, where resort guests get first dibs and non-resort guests don't, you are at a disadvantage of a not resort guest. There is a strong chance that if you're not a Disney World resort guest, you are not getting a rise the resistance lightning lane. Where again, in Disneyland, you can't book anything until you've stepped foot in the park. So as long as you're willing to get up early, your odds are pretty good of getting whatever you like. Now, ultimately, we did two more attractions here in Epcot than we did in Disneyland using Genie Plus. Genie Plus can be a really helpful tool in both parks, but it takes more strategy and it takes more effort here in Walt Disney World. You have to think about what you're going to book at 7 a.m. You have to think about when you are able to book your fancy rides. You want to use that 120 minute rule. You want to use that modify function. And yes, those things occur in Disneyland as well, but it's far less frequent. In Disneyland, it's much more book a ride, ride it, book another ride, ride it, so on and so forth. In Walt Disney World, there's a lot more strategy that goes into it when it comes to booking things with the 120 minute rule, with stacking, with modifying, it's a little bit more nuanced. Ultimately, I've said it before and I'll say it again, Genie Plus can be incredibly confusing. And I think it's more confusing here in Walt Disney World because of the 7 a.m. rule, because of the fancy rides rule. I think it's more confusing than just, hey, when you get into the park, you can start booking things using this system. I do think, however, that Genie Plus is more necessary here in Walt Disney World because of the wait times. On average, wait times are longer here in Walt Disney World just based on what the crowds are. There's a couple rides in Disneyland that get pretty long lines, but there are usually more rides in Walt Disney World that get hour plus long lines, and Genie Plus can really help you manage your day. Ultimately, it's hard to say which park is better to use Genie Plus in because you're going to use it in different ways. To get the most out of your money in Disneyland, you're going to want to park hop between those two parks. In Disney World, the best way to use it is to understand that nuance. Understand all the rules of when you can start booking things, understand the modify function, really understand fiddle faddling, and you 
can have a very successful day in the park. Again, in three hours, we rode seven attractions across Epcot, and you could apply that to any of the parks here at Walt Disney World. If you want to see examples of park hopping, check out the photo challenge Alan and I did where we did every photo attraction 14 across all four parks in one day. For that, we used Lightning Lane pretty much everywhere and we were able to get them all done. And those are some heavy hitters across all four parks. Ultimately, there are things to like about Genie Plus. There's things to not like about Genie Plus, but if you want to skip the lines at the attractions across these parks, this is the way to do it. And it can be a really helpful tool. So hopefully this video is helpful to show you the best way to maximize your dollar out on both coasts. A big thank you again to our friends at Undercover Tours for sponsoring this video. Next time you're planning a Disney World or Disneyland trip, make sure you check them out. They've got discounted tickets and in Disneyland, you can add Genie Plus for even more of a discount. I've loved working with them. Even before Mammoth Club existed, I was a customer of theirs. I love that 365 day refund policy. I actually used it just a few weeks ago. We had purchased discounted Disneyland tickets through them for this video, actually, uh, when Magic Keys became available again. So their customer service was great. They took care of that ticket refund, no problem. Undercover Tourist is also a great planning resource when you're planning your next trip. Their website has things like a crowd calendar, so you can check out what the crowds look like during your trip. They've got a planning podcast that yours truly was on recently, so check that out. And they have a bunch of great Genie Plus information. They've got infographics, FAQs, a lot of the stuff we talked about today written down, so make sure you go check out their website. Thanks again to them for sponsoring this video. Well, friends, that is a wrap on our Coast to Coast Genie Plus Challenge. Like I said, hopefully this was helpful for you to understand the best ways to use the service on both coasts. In the meantime, folks, let us know what other challenges you'd like to see from us in the comments down below. Be sure to like and subscribe if you're new, and please ring that notification bell and follow us on all of our socials. And until next time, friends, I'm Molly. And I'm Allie. And that was Max. We'll see you next time. It's been magical. Bye. Bye. We need to bring like flat Stanley, but flat like Max. Like a picture of Max? Mm -hmm. and, like on a stick? On a stick. We could walk him around? Mm -hmm. Would we then have to be a party of three on the attractions? To be safe, I say yes. Mm. You know what? Somehow I can imagine that you and the stick of Max would ride together and I'd still end up alone. <laughs>